There we go. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name's Andy Wilkinson, as they said. Um, and we deal specifically with websites. But um, when I first started to create websites, it soon became very apparent to me that there's no point having a website unless someone can see it. Um, so I very soon started to focus on um, online visibility and the, the different ways that you can promote yourself online. So the title of my talk today is, So You Have a Website, Now What? Um, you can find me on Twitter. I'm Andinette. Um, some of the people we've worked for, um, uh, the council, engineering companies, um, and I've been lucky to do a little bit of training with the local growth hubs, development agencies, Enterprise Nation, and I've spoken at Google a couple of times. God knows why. <laughs> so um, is, your, is your website a form of advertising? Um, good question, really. My clicker's not working. Yes, it is. So I put this picture up, really, because Obviously, this is a row of terraced houses. And I want you to kind of imagine that all of a sudden, everyone in this house, in each of these houses, has just opened a business. Um, yeah, now what? <laughs> um, nobody knows, you know, from looking at these houses, you would not know what they do, how to find them. And that's, that's kind of... For me, that's kind of similar with what a lot of people do when they start to uh, put websites online. They'll approach an agency or they'll approach, you know, someone who knows how to make websites and they'll, they'll launch the website. I've even had clients, I mean, s some of you probably be familiar with this where you'd be about to deploy a website and your client will say like, no, no, don't, don't put it online yet because I'm not sure about the wording and you're like, Nobody's going to see it, you know. It's, it's <laughs> a news, for, especially you know, especially if it's a brand new domain. But th there is still that that kind of TV comedy where you're going to put it online and everyone's going to start hitting it all of a sudden. So for me, this is what it's like when you launch a website. Um, and there still seems to be this this discrepancy with people between the the, the fact that. It's, it's real people at the other end that are using these websites. You know, you're not, just, you're not just communicating with robots. You're communicating with real users at the other end. Um, if you go to the high street, this is what we see. So, so basically, you know, that all these, um, you know that all these are shops. You know what they're selling. Um, they've got shop fronts. They've got branding, you know, they've got the products in the windows. You know what they're about. Now, you've, for me, we, when we talk to clients, it's kind of clear that you've got to be able to translate the, the physical space into the virtual space. Um, and the answer to that is advertising. You know, it's online advertising. And I think I wanted to speak about it because especially amongst my fellow web designers and developers, those who don't deal with digital marketing, it's quite common for them to demonize it or say it's a big con or no, I don't do that. It's just, it's just a Google want all your money kind of thing. Um, and I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. So I love this quote, it's one of my favorite quotes. Um, doing business without advertising um, it's like winking at a girl in the dark. You know what you're doing, but nobody else does. So, you know, you've got this website. You're not advertising it. You, you love, you know, you've set up this brilliant new business. You, you sell this great product, and you've launched your website online, but nobody else knows about it because you've not done anything to advertise it. Um, I was speaking to um, a friend last night at, at, in the pub when I got here, and she said to me, um, businesses didn't think anything a few years ago of paying £1,500 a year to advertise in the yellow pages. Um, didn't flinch at it. But people and clients, quite commonly now, 
would just go out of their minds if you even quote them that for a website, especially like a new or micro business. They're like, well, you know, why should it cost me that much? And it, it's always, it's nuts to me because it, you know, it's like, you will pay your rent. You may not even have um, you may not even have people who come to your physical space, but you'll pay rent for it. But you don't think you know if you're doing your entire business online, or people who plan to do their entire businesses online, just don't put this thought into um, you know into what it what it takes to get seen online. Um, and for me, what what I try and explain is that. You know the difference between traditional, as we call it, versus digital advertising, isn't that different? You're still reaching a person at the end. It's just where are those people now? Those people used to look in the yellow pages. Now those people look at their phones or their iPads. So if if we can get our clients to understand that, you know, there's no difference between digital advertising and placing an ad in the yellow pages, then, you know, that's part of the journey. I keep pointing this this way, but I need to be pointing it over there. So, yeah, another point is, um, again, many people don't think twice about traditional marketing and promotion. So the yellow pages for me is, is similar to search advertising. So when you type something in online, you search for it, you see your adverts right at the top of the page. Um, that is similar, but then you have another form of advertising online. Uh, it's popular on Facebook, Google, Twitter, and it's display advertising. And that is exactly the same as, say, a billboard or a promotional product or a print product. Um, and yeah, most of us don't think twice about traditional marketing, promotion. We've got business cards, you know, these lanyards advertising, um, all these promotional products, print products. And yet, paid digital, for me, every day, I still hear it demonised in, in the world of small business. Like, oh, I tried that. It's, I spent £100 and I got nothing for it. You know, I'm, I'm, it's a big con. Um, I've literally never heard anyone say that about a batch of leaflets, which may have cost more and had no response whatsoever. So it, it's all about, for me, a lot, of, a lot of clients would expect to spend, say, £500 on digital advertising and they would come to me and say, I need to see at least um, £2,000 back from that. I will literally always say, right off the bat, that's great. But don't you think that if I could just do that, I'd be in the Bahamas and not sat here, like, you know, servicing you. Um, but it's true. You know, it, it, wouldn't it be great to just say, I'll put £10 into digital advertising and then I'll make 20 back immediately. That, and, and yet that seem, seems to still be the expectation for paid advertising. Um, and yet nobody would have that expectation of this kind of thing. It's just like it's promotional. It's promotional. So because of that, I find that a lot of our small clients just don't want to advertise. Um, another thing is they may have tried it. They may have seen that all-encompassing Google voucher where you get £75. <laughs> Whoops. Um, tried it. Sorry about this. Um, and you completely burned through that £75 because they followed the wizard of online setup um, and then they just don't trust advertising again. See, I don't think that um, companies uh, like Google and Facebook do themselves any favours, but I imagine they must absolutely make a fortune from, from doing that. Um, and that's probably why, why they don't really do much about it. Um, so, just these are my tips. There's so much to cover, and I just want to say I've got half an hour here to talk, and I couldn't possibly talk about SEO, AdWords, and all paid advertising, and even scrape the surface of it in that time. Um, but just a few tips for good online visibility. And, whoops. Yeah, so before you start, most people have already got the domain, but you know, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see this, but I typed in some of the to look for some of the worst domain names. 
Yeah, it, it, you know. <laughs> and these are actually real domains that. They can all be read differently. Literally all of them. I like, I like power genitalia best. That's just one of my favorite. What's that all about? <laughs> yeah, so that illustrates my point really nicely. Um, think, about, think about your domain. Get it right before you, um, before you put it online. In all seriousness, just, you know, most of us who are web developers here know this. Your domain is many things. It's your email address. So if, if you email someone from, from one of those domains, <laughs> what are they going to think? <laughs> um, <laughs> auction shit. Dot go, yeah, okay. Uh, um, it's keywords people find you with, so that could be quite worrying. Um, <laughs> An indication of what and where you are, IP anywhere. <laughs> um, and yeah, and most of all, it is part, part of your brand's per, I'm, I'm glad you found those funny because I thought they were hilarious. Um, I, IP anywhere. Yeah, so part of your brand's personality. So that's the first thing, you know, really look at that domain. Um, I'm not going to ramble on too much about hosting um, and it is probably obvious to a lot of people and there's a lot of advice in here but a lot of clients often want to go for the cheapest possible hosting and you will offer as web, web designers often offer them a really good and robust solution and, and they'll come back and say but I can get it for, for two pounds here um, so you know things we always say is well traffic how many visitors you allowed how much storage you're going to need. Um, I think our largest website is less than a gig, and even that I think is large, because when I learned to build websites like a long time ago, our, our aim in uni was to get them less than a meg. So, yeah, can you imagine? Um, backups, you know, do you have daily backups in case of a disaster? Do you get email boxes with this domain? Um, we always recommend you know, a, a proper mail solution anyway. Just find a good hosting provider. Um, and really drill down with our, with our clients as to why. Why do you need a website? Everyone needs a website, but, but it comes back to this, um, remembering that you're dealing with actual people at the end. You know, do you need a website, or is it just that you want to um, engage with people? It, it's generally that you want people to read your articles, um, buy something, fill in a form. You know, you, you don't need a website, you need customers. So, yeah, drill down the why. The web, the web presence is a means to an end. What is the end? How do you want to get there? Some of the things we do um, to help our clients discover their goals is um, we've started doing something recently called impact map mapping. You may or may not have heard of it, but you can check it out at impactmapping.org. And it helps clients get the content drilled down by putting the goal right at the beginning there. So we want to achieve this revenue at the end of the year. This is course, um, trying to sell courses. So who would the people be that that would affect? It might be, put my teeth in, I can't say it, prospective students. Uh, existing students, teachers, or internal teams, and what action would they need to take? So all the different actions, they might want to buy a course, they might want to sign up for a repeat course, recommend to their friends, um, instructors might want to create more courses, and then from then, you can quickly start to get a series of real micro goals there, and these actually turn into the structure of a website quite nicely, so... Um, or it might be a campaign, an email campaign, a landing page, and so forth. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a whole concept, and you can check it out there at impactmapping.org. So, I didn't want to 
spend too much going over all that because most of us here are, you know, know how to get a website online. But I did think it was worth mentioning. So the first thing is, is SEO. And the, the most obvious SEO tips for a website is um, title tags and meta. So make sure um, that the title and description is what search engines normally display. There are plugins out there if you're using WordPress for all your major, um, for all major content management systems. Um, and we all know the main ones. There's a lot of people here today um, with different uh, plugins for that. Um, if you use a, a link service or product in your blog post, if, make sure that you link things internally within your site. Um, when it comes to external link, there's a little bit of um, controversy on this now, on backlinking, but what we always say is if it's a quality backlink, then it's worth it. So go for quality schools, governments, newspapers. PR agencies are a good place to start if you can afford to use one. And then again, influencers and bloggers. Um, and with all web content, you know, the content is really important. Make sure it's regular, make sure it's well worded, worded for a human. Um, you know, there's nothing worse than reading a page that's been optimized for SEO in an old hat way and it just doesn't read properly to a, to a human. I think you've, we've all come across pages like that. Um, and keep it up to date, because your up to date content is always ammunition for splintering onto lots of other networks. Um, yeah, so just a little bit about search engine. And I just, you know, I'm staying in Finsbury Park and I just did a quick Google search for breakfast in Finsbury Park. Um, and the first thing we've got now is the local listings. Now what's, what's really interesting is as search engines have evolved, organic content is being pushed further and further down the page, especially um, if you're on a mobile. And as you know, most of us are now accessing the web on a mobile, especially if we're making a search like this. Now, I, I did this search today on my desktop for the purpose of the slide, but I would, if I was searching normally, I, that would be a mobile search for me. Um, so you've got the local listings. These people have been um, astute enough to use Google My Business. So one of the first things we always say to anyone who puts a website online is, you need to hook it up with Google My Business. Um, it can make such a massive difference to your online visibility. It can make that difference to your online visibility. You know, if I don't think I saw any of these on page one anywhere, you know, in an organic listing, but they're there because they're on the map. Um, I had a client who um, has a company, I'm sure she won't mind me saying, she's a, a clinical psychologist, and her company was called Time, or is called Time Psychology. And when we launched that site, um, she complained for a while after that she couldn't be found. And we, you know, we were, we were saying, you've got such a name where you know, you're competing with Time Magazine's psychology department and you've got people looking for part-time psychology positions. And she was in control of her Google page, I think at the time, or another agency. And after having looked into it, um, she had her old domain linking to the name of a company. And as soon as we switched it out, you know, like the next day you typed her in as a company, because that's what she couldn't find herself on the, and a few of her search terms. She was right there then on page one. So it's so important to get yourself on the map for visibility. It can be one of, it can be one of those things that just makes so much difference. Um, further down, top organic result, as often is TripAdvisor. And you have your title here and underneath we've got the URL and the meta description. Now this one hasn't been optimized, it's just picked up what TripAdvisor's content, um, content of the page is. So you're getting a review there. Luckily it's a good review. It is hooked into reviews, but it's not really giving you much information. 
So, I, I mean, personally, I would see that and I'd, I'd just carry on, like, looking for something. Um, after, after those results came this. So, um, there's a cafe called The Front Room. Was that there? Yes, it was. Okay. So, The Front Room Cafe. Now, you can see their meta descriptions have been thought about and put in properly. So, some, you know, so many people... I'm not saying anyone in this room, but so many people, and especially when they're adding pages to their own website or adding their own blog content, don't think to make sure that these are filled in and that they actually say what's on the page. And, you know, because it says breakfast in Finsbury Park, then we've got those results right there. I didn't go for breakfast there, by the way. I'd... <laughs> it might be really good. <laughs> um, yeah, so... But then beyond this, um, what started to come up now is, as I said before, about mobile and mobile content, and the more that happens, um, and, and the, the smarter that search and more sophisticated that search engines have become, position one, you know, is position one even enough now? Um, so I did another search, just a really relevant one, how do I install WordPress? I do know how to do that, by the way. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so the first thing I see there is uh, Google AdWords. So, obviously, bidding on their own brand, which is good practice. Um, really well put together ad, using all the ad extensions that are possible. All of those extra things enc encourage users to click right on through. Although, that's not really telling you how to install a WordPress website. So, you see that there. Obviously, um, WordPress's own AdWords team are bidding on their search terms, so they're always appearing at the top of the search engine. And that's probably not that costly to do, to, and it usually isn't to bid on your own brand. But then, the top organic search, which is the codex, is right down there. I mean, depending what you're looking at, it's, it's just way below the fold. So, you know, let's let's put this into another business and think about your average user and their attention span, which I think is around three seconds now online. Um, you know, you've done all this work to get to position one and we've got this, we've got position zero. Um, so that's what it's referred to, position zero. And if, if you don't know about position zero and you haven't heard of that as a thing, just Google, um, how to get position zero results. There's a good article on moz.com uh, moz that goes through that and explains a lot of the things that you can do. And there's, there's, we see it a lot with movie times. So if you start Googling movie times or you look up an actor or you'll have, most of you will have noticed that you start getting these, um, these results that, that are not websites, but they're actually part of Google um, or they could have been pulled from a website, but they're presented in a different way. So this one, the, the top one, is called a featured snippet. Um, if, you code, if you code the content of your website in such a way, um, it can be picked up as a featured snippet. So you can see that HostGator have got right there, right above. So, I mean, this is really good because this will get a very high click-through rate, and this is going to get HostGate with an awful lot of traffic, probably way more than the codex. So by putting a bit of helpful content in your website, you can actually get this covered position zero if you, if you tweak it right. And again, related questions here. So these will, these will pertain to other people's websites that have this kind of featured snippet on them. And there are, there are a lot more than these. Um, but if, like I say, you can get quite a bit of info about that on moz.com and it, it's really, really interesting. Um, and yeah, right down there, we've got the organic result. <clears throat> so just a few tips for rising up the search engine rankings. Um, and again, it is, it is about high quality text and it's about, it's about the text on your pages <laughs> being relevant to the content of your website, to how it's indexed. Um, again, 
reaching out to influential people can help you and offering to write posts on um, other sites. That's not as easy to do, I, I don't find. I mean, we've had, we've worked with companies who've then gone to other companies for SEO and they've done outreach and they've written articles. Um, wow, have I been talking for that long? <laughs> um, yeah, so be authentic and measure. Right, I had a lot more to say, but I'm just going to cover this then, basically. So this is the battle that we hear all the time from here. So we do both PPC. We do pay-per-click more than SEO, to be fair. And it seems to be a fight. Literally, when I Googled SEO and PPC, I get these, like, fist fight pictures coming up. And it's just like, well, you know, why? Why does it have to be a fight? To me, both things are very important to, to a website's visibility. And you get this, um, you know, SEO is slow, it's free, it's durable. It's not free. Who said it's free? It's, you know, if you do it yourself, you either need to pay an expert, who certainly isn't free, um, you know, and if you're doing it yourself, it's taking a hell of a lot of time. That, that's time that you might be better doing what you're really good at. Um, it isn't necessarily slow. With latest updates of search engines, changes in content can almost update on the fly. Um, it is durable, you know, and it is earned. But for pay-per-click advertising, um, they've said that it's expensive versus free. It's not necessarily expensive, and it can be a lot cheaper than, say, printed material because it's measurable because you can choose who sees it and because you only pay when somebody chooses to visit your website. And you can also decide um, how much you want to spend every day. Um, and as for it being temporary, this is another thing we hear. Well, it's all we're paying, but as soon as we switch it off, we've lost everything. Um, we work with a client um, who does children's jelly snacks. Um, and it was quite a new brand. They're called Naturelli. And he didn't have barely any organic search at all. And we ran some digital campaigns um, on his brand name with display advertising. And within, and he, he didn't, you know, it wasn't a big spend. This was one family launching a product. Within three months, I think their organic search had grown by 400%. And that, it doesn't matter whether you switch the ads off or not. People then know about this product that they didn't know about before. They may have used it, and then they're gonna start searching. So, you know, sometimes he runs ads, sometimes he doesn't, but that organic grows. So, you know, it's a myth that paid advertising is temporary. Advertising your brand, even if you stop, people are still going to know about it. Yeah, it's best to keep going if you can, but don't just assume that if you stop, <laughs> that, you know, everyone will forget about you. So... Yeah, so just to add to that, ZMOT is um, something that's known as the zero moment of truth. And it's that, it's that point in time, again, just look that up. It's that point in time where you suddenly become aware of something that you weren't aware of before. Um, so yeah, a, a good, well-rounded digital campaign, it can permanently improve your search engine rankings. It, it's, so SEO, PPC, do both, everybody wins. So a few tips were paid. Start small, watch it grow, it's, it's not scary. Um, if you're new, it's great for building an audience and brand awareness. Work out spend based on how much you make per conversion. Try different platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Google. Um, the good thing is you can be laser focused with your targeting. You can target by postcode, by keyword, by, by demographic. There's so many ways you can target and you can have very little wastage. Um, again, retargeting. Imagine um, showing your ads to people who've already visited your site and you know that they've got a level of interest. Imagine if every leaflet you gave out was to someone who might actually be ready to buy. Um, and then finally, just seek advice. Watch out for sharks. I, I can have you at the top of Google in, in 10 minutes, um, but is anybody going to be looking for the keyword that I've got you up there for? So that is really that is really relevant to ask. Um, I'm going to finish there because I have got a few more slides, but they're all kind of social media and I've run out of time. 
So thanks for listening. I, I really appreciate it. Um, and if anyone's got any questions, I'm, I'll try my best to answer them. Any questions? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, um, great talk, and I just wanted to say that absolutely everything that you said resonated with my own experience over the last 13 years Thank you. of setting up on my own and running a, um, now a, an agency. Um, you mentioned the importance of the local listings, wasn't it? Google Maps became Google Places, became Google Business, became Google My Business now. Um, I'll put it this way. What, what, what do you, you, you take on a client... And then what do you say to the angry roofer who's phoning you up saying, I used to appear on one of those three coveted slots and now I've gone and it must be something you've done? I could say a lot more than that, but I'll just leave, leave you to answer that. <laughs> yeah, there is that. There is that. Um, and, you know, to be honest, that has not happened to me. So I, I've not really thought to say anything about that. But thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> So um, what, what do you feel are the, how does Google decide who to put there if there's hundreds of competing businesses in a locality? From, what from sort everything of factors? I, from everything I know, it will be to do with the, the quality of the landing pages themselves. Um, I'm going to go out there and say there's so much to cover it. I don't know everything about Google My Business, but what I do know is if you put any other kind of ad out there or Google listing, that the algorithm runs on the keyword match to the keywords on your website. Um, things, like, um, just things like the site content. Um, you're putting me on the spot now because there's, there's quite a few things that make up like ad quality that makes you appear higher. And it, it's, it's not, I, I know these listings are free. So I, oh God, typical. Yeah, I, I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not sure what would make someone disappear off a map, and it's not happened to me, but we've not really tend to dealt with um, individual tradesmen. So that's something I'll, I'll actually look into. But yeah, I don't know, to be honest. But <laughs> great question. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, my understanding is reviews make a difference as well because quite a lot of businesses in a local yeah. area, and you can get some decent reviews on your both your Google My Business and then other review sites like TripAdvisor. Which so kind of all plugs one. into like how much content and work yeah. is kind of done on that listing, I'll isn't it? Yeah. Go on. All of the above. All of the right. So oh, so I wasn't I'm entirely wrong there. <laughs> yeah, I, I've not. I've never worked with like several of the same kind of business in the same kind of area so it has in all the years i've done it it's literally i've never been asked that question to be honest are important now so directory listings have become important again yeah like they used to be. and yet places like yell literally only pay google to get higher up the search engine and they, you know they take a huge cut they are a premier google partner which is uh, it's always a cause for annoyance amongst my other Google partner colleagues, but yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask a question. When you're talking to clients and they ask you what sort of budget, budget or you're speaking to someone who's completely unrealistic about the fact that Google isn't free, what sort of budgets do you work with realistically to give them a return on their investment? So, um, budget-wise, I we will work with, we work with Right across the range, my, my biggest spend is around, has been around £1,500 a day, but I know there are much bigger spends than that, and our smallest spends have been around £300 a month. What we try and do with clients is, sometimes I will straight out tell them, it's not worth spending money until you've done this to your website, or, you know, we've had, we had someone ring us and say, we want to be the biggest um, human resource, uh, number one go-to site for this, 
and we came back with a proposal. I'm, lucky, I'm really lucky that my, one of my business partners joined me from Google, and I've just gone like that with a lot of the Google stuff to him because he, he's worked there for years, and he just knows inside out how it works. So he came up with, a, okay, you need a monthly spend of at least seven to 8,000 pounds. And they were like, oh, we've got one. And he's like, okay, well, you need to realign your goals then. There's a lot of agencies out there that will just, just say, they'll promise you the earth for your money, but they're gonna have a really high turnover. I, you know, some, some keywords and some industries, you need to spend a lot. Things like the keyword mortgage can be up to 70 pounds a click. You, you know, from looking, from doing research, um, that um, the average of what a keyword could cost, but then you can also choose how much you plan to spend on that keyword. You can also do a lot with paid advertising where you are very specific that um, people have to t type in an exact combination or certain words before the ad will appear. So for example, if someone was looking for office space, um, you could negative out the word post. So if someone typed post office, your ad would not show for that. Um, and there's no, it's not immediate. You've got to optimize over several months before you can start seeing results. And this is what we say, it's the, you know, this is why we try and say to clients, you've got to view it the same way that you would view putting an ad in a magazine or sending out a leaflet campaign. You cannot just switch it on and expect it. Sometimes it works, but... I think that's a really good point because yeah. most clients seem to be quite unrealistic about their expectations in terms of how quickly the actual campaign will begin to give them a return. Oh, but, you know, we, we had a, a client approach us and say, um, i just about to spend £25,000 on a TV campaign, but I want to go digital. And we put this proposal together that managed that spend over a six-month period and gave him all the what he could expect to see in terms of traffic, who would see it. And we... We, got, we sat down with him and he's like, he said, well, I've only got a thousand pounds. And so, so we're like, okay, well, you know, that's a lot different than what you said. He just wanted to dip his toe in. Um, and I think it, the campaign had been running two to three weeks. He'd spent about five, six hundred pounds. We were getting, you know, a lot of click-throughs to his site. A brand new product in the UK, like not many people had heard of it. It was a children's moldable clay and he rang me up quite angrily saying I was going to spend 25 grand on television I, you know I'm not making any sales and I'm like you've spent 300 pounds on Google and 300 on Facebook like what you know what are you expecting and it's you do have this level of, of just complete anger directed at you that you've not suddenly pressed a button and made someone rich and managing expectations you know it, it's like any other form of advertising. It's not, it's not a magic button. Thank you. Last question. It's just a small one. I just wanted to know if you could put the slides online somewhere because they were really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll come and speak to me in a minute. I'll, right, I'll thank you. Yeah. email them to you. Any, uh, anyone? Um, t um, and Annette is my... You can tweet me, I guess that's... Hang on. So it's Andernet. Um, or it's it's Andy with an I at madebyfactory.com if you want to email me. I'll happily send you slides. <laughs> um on is that the LinkedIn? Yeah, I, I suppose so. <laughs> I've not done that before, but yeah, by all means. Cool. That thank was a really you. good finish. Thank oh, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.